तो अब लेट स्टार्ट लेट स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन सो आई टेल यू अबाउट प्रांजल प्रांजल इज करेंटली वर्किंग एज अ डेटा साइंटिस्ट एज अ सीनियर डेटा साइंटिस्ट इन रेजर पे विच इज अ ग्रेट कंपनी टू बी ऑनेस्ट प्रांजल इज फ्रॉम आई टी खड़गपुर ही डिड इज बी टेक फ्रॉम आई टी खड़गपुर एंड सिंस देन ही हैज बीन अ डेटा साइंटिस्ट इन डिफरेंट कंपनीज ठीक है और प्रांजल को कैमरा पे लाने के पहले आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू टू थिंग्स अबाउट हिम फर्स्ट ही इज अ फ्रेंड तो जब भी हम मिलते हैं वी टॉक अलाउट अबाउट सच थिंग्स अबाउट डेटा साइंस अबाउट द इंडस्ट्री अबाउट द फ्यूचर एंड आई पर्सनली फाइंड हिम वेरी वेरी इंसाइटफुल ठीक है एंड आई ऑल्सो सी कि ही कॉन्स्टेंटली ही ही ट्राइज टू रीड एंड एक्यूमुलेट नॉलेज सो जब मैंने डिसाइड किया कि यार किसी को लेके आना इंडस्ट्री से तो ही वॉज द फर्स्ट कैंडिडेट फॉर मी एंड मुझे लगा कि सबसे पहले इसको ही लेके आते हैं बिकॉज आई रियली फील की ही कैन बी अ वेरी गुड वैल्यू एडिशन इन द सेशन ठीक है तो प्रांजल आई होप यू आर विजिबल ऑडिबल हाई प्रांजल सो आई होप यू आर एक्साइटेड फॉर द सेशन लेट स्टार्ट विद द फ्लो लेट स्टार्ट विथ योर प्रोफेशनल जर्नी लाइक पीपल वुड बी इंटरेस्टेड टू नो की when you got out of college what was your journey like like what all companies you worked with or kis tarah ki cheeze aapne ki once you got out of college sure uh, thank you nitish so hello everyone uh, myself pranjali uh, i started my journey in 2015 uh, so a little background uh, as nitish said right i graduated from iit khadakpur uh, fun fact i did not study computer science or any circuit branch there i was from metallurgy and uh, uh, i started my data science journey roughly towards the end of my graduation career uh, the first company that i joined after college was american express uh, where i was doing what we back then called data analytics now it has come to a stage where we call it ai uh, but yeah back then i was with american express uh, spent about a few years there uh, working on a few things that i'll talk about later then moved to amazon uh good place good learning uh, started uh, with deep learning there after amazon i moved to expedia uh, in london in uk uh, where i was working a lot with uh, computer vision and natural language processing and uh, again uh, spent a couple of the years there and then i kind of was brave enough and fortunate enough to start my own company uh, alpha hub in canada uh which was a deep learning research platform uh that we'll probably talk about sometime and uh uske baad uh, uh, covid happened so a few things changed uh, didn't really work out for me came back to india had a small stint with freshworks where i built some cool targeting engines for them and uh, now i'm working with razor pay as nitish said i'm a staff engineer there uh, primarily kind of leading the ai charter for razor pay and this has been my Uh, roughly 8 plus years in the industry okay that's great uh, pranjal so uh, let's let's start our discussion around your current job like uh, see yahan pe jo bhi log hain they are trying to get into the industry so mm. most of the times they know what to study what not to study but the problem with our education system is ki wo academic or industry ke beech ka wo gap bridge nahi ho pata hai so let's let's see ki uh, in your current job profile like what is it like uh in razor pay uh so uh, ek minute so just to understand the question better uh you want to understand my perspective of uh data science at razor pay or uh, you... yeah yeah like uh what all things ya yeah, kis tarah ke projects you do at razor pay uh so padhai se kitna alag hai jo jis tarah ka data science you are doing in a company okay Uh, तो पहले मैं कुछ प्रोजेक्ट्स कवर करता हूँ लाइक आई प्राइमरीली डील विद अ फ्यू थिंग्स लाइक पेमेंट्स बिकॉज ऑफ कोर्स रेजर पे इज अ पेमेंट्स कंपनी आई डील विद सिक्योरिटी एंड आई बिल्ड आई हैव बीन बिल्डिंग अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरनल टूल्स एंड सर्विसेज टू आइदर सपोर्ट एम एल डेवलपमेंट और टू यू नो ऑटोमेट पार्ट ऑफ इट और थिंग्स लाइक दैट ओके अगर हम इसके बारे में ऐसे सोचें कि वॉट वी रियली स्टडी अबाउट डेटा साइंस वर्सेज वॉट वी अप्लाई Uh, i think uh, there's a lot of difference right uh, wo- when we study data science we it literally depends which school of frame you are coming from but 
when we study data science we typically study a lot about algorithms and uh, you know things mm. that make a few things happen regression classification deep learning etc etc right industry may the biggest challenge is data right uh, because uh, finding the data to train the model on is the most difficult challenge and even when you get the data it's not in the best format so a lot of engineering uh, around machine learning happens with the data and okay. once it is in a shape and form where we can do something meaningful then starts the data science machine learning uh, model building okay okay uh, so like guide us like how does a typical day in your professional life uh, life looks like like what are the things that you typically do when you go to office or rather whenever you are working uh, from home so kya cheeze aap karte ho um so i'll i'll throw aside uh, meetings for sure <laughs> <laughs> uh, but usually um uh it is more about how to convert a real world problem into a data science problem for example uh, a vp of a particular de department will come and tell me ki uh, i have this money leaks issue where uh, merchants ko we are paying out money which we are accepting on their behalf and mm -hmm. what happens is sometimes multiple payments happen uh, just because of some network error or something so and we are losing like crores and crores in this multiple payment right uh, okay. can we fix this with machine learning so that is the kind of problem statement we get right the, the, nobody comes and gives us data or a, a, a loss function to optimize for or a metric to look at that mm -hmm. is not how it works so a lot of time goes into formulating the problem what is it that i'm trying to solve for how will i measure that it is being solved or not and then comes the part where you know we talk about data and uh, models and what not and a majority of time goes into brainstorming these things right uh, because let's say i talk about uh, okay if if uh, money leaks is happening like this example uh, and i say okay i'll find uh, payments which happened in 2 seconds it's not really a machine learning thing right i can write a simple code and figure that out but uh, then somebody will come and say no a payment can happen in in a gap of like 5 minutes 15 minutes half an hour it can still be a repetitive payment so all these things happen and then there is a lot of brainstorming i go and partner with uh, product people i go and part partner with engineering folks i go and partner with uh, there are people called devops uh, mm. on the operations then there are finops people who actually do banking stuff right who are connected to banks and merchants directly and sometimes we even go and talk to customer uh, customers which are merchants basically for razor pay uh so formulating the problem and collecting as much information about a domain as as required is uh, usually like 60% of the job 50 to 60% of the job and remaining 40% then has to do with uh, again data collection cleaning it making it you know usable i i would say actually writing machine learning code which is a leisure activity for me uh <laughs> usually happens for less than 10% of the time okay. and some days when i'm really lucky i find problems which are theoretically very hard uh, you know which have uh, time limit uh, time bounds or space bounds in its implementation mm -hmm. uh, for example any n square algorithm right uh, that those things then we kind of spend a lot of time in तो वैसे प्रोजेक्ट्स वंस इन अवाइल आते हैं दो तीन क्वार्टर में एक बार एंड दे टेक अ लॉट ऑफ बैंडवेड थियोरेटिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग कोडिंग एंड व्हाट नॉट बट यूजुअली इट्स लाइक 10 टू 15% ऑफ कोडिंग एंड रिमेनिंग एवरीथिंग ओके ओके सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज प्रांजल कि जैसे अभी यू गिव एन एग्जांपल जहां पे लेट्स से अ प्रॉब्लम सडनली हैपेंड एंड योर टीम इज ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट कि मशीन लर्निंग के थ्रू कैन यू सॉल्व दिस और नॉट व्हाट अबाउट लॉन्ग टर्म प्रोजेक्ट्स लेट्स से जो कंपनी के विजन से कुछ अलाइंड है और मशीन लर्निंग स्पेस में है एंड योर टीम इज वर्किंग लाइक हाउ डू यू प्लान दोज प्रोजेक्ट्स लॉन्ग टर्म एग्जीक्यूशन कैसे होता है व्हाट टूल्स यू यूज व्हाट काइंड ऑफ वर्कफ्लोज यू यूज उसके बारे में इफ यू कैन गाइड श्योर तो आई आई विल शेयर दैट वी वी हैव अ विजन फॉर रेजर पे व्हिच इज लाइक अ 3 ईयर लॉन्ग विजन व्हिच इज प्योरली अराउंड रीइनवेंटिंग रिस्क मैनेजमेंट एंड फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन तो risk management and fraud detection is nothing new right every right. company which deals with money does it at in some shape and form right and, uh, it has been going on for i don't know like a couple of decades now so there is no nothing new in it right 
but we still are, you know, uh, we still have a vision to reinvent it because today the attacks are very sophisticated. There are n number of ways to attack a system, starting from a very simple DDoS attack, which is a denial of service attack, mm. siphoning money using a personalized attack or hacking somebody's phone and this and that. So a lot can happen. And, mm. and the definition of risk has changed and the definition of fraud has changed a lot, right? Okay. So to adjust to these new type of attack scenarios and to adjust to how much can happen in the future in the next three years involving, let's say, crypto and all, like there, there are too many financial assets now. Earlier, it just used to be one currency or, or right. one currency, right? Now yeah. there are too many things to track and focus on. So we have a vision and that's just one part of it, like reinventing risk and fraud uh, detection uh, is one vision and it's a long term. Mm-hmm. Because nobody knows where we stand today. Nobody knows where the industry stands today. Right. But we have some baselines key on an average, everybody's doing like this. Can we push the boundary by 1% or by 2%? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Okay. So uh, like what kind of tools and workflows do you use like in your projects? Uh, uh, again, it depends. So I think for the POC stage, when we are kind of formulating a problem, trying to understand what's going on, playing with the data, uh, usually we use, uh, any cloud providers, natives, uh, notebooks or, you know, development environment. So, okay. uh, we can use, uh, Databricks, which is nothing but Jupyter, but in a managed mm-hmm. service, or we can use, we can use data robot, anything like any other service that is fully managed and provides quick, quick POC. We use these things and usually we use AWS stack, but I mean, it's, we are still cloud neutral, so we can move to GCP or Azure or whatever, but usually there is one stack which a company follows. So we use AWS and the POC tools are such Datadog is there, uh, Databricks is there, uh, MLflow is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this is purely around experimentation, hyperparameter mm. tuning, right. whatnot. Deployment side, pay, the game changes a little bit because at a scale at which we operate as a company, it's a very fast-paced setup, right? We cannot afford to have low latency systems because mm. payments, right? We are given like a third of a second to do all the ML we want to do and execute a payment, right? So that becomes a big challenge. So on the deployment side, we still deploy directly on Kubernetes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can talk about the details of it, but basically think about a machine learning solution packaged in a Docker container in some format Mm -hmm. and then pushed on to a Kubernetes environment where uh, all of the traffic is moving around. So that is the usual setup. Other than that, there are many, many tools uh, for monitoring uh, our models in production, for measuring how good we are doing and whatnot. Uh, I would say the top of my hat is. uh, uh, anything that supports Kubernetes. So Prometheus, Grafana are critical for business and for us as well. And we use uh, things like Selden, which kind of acts as a wrapping service to put things on Kubernetes. So yeah, th- this is roughly the development life cycle at our side. Okay. Okay. So this answer say, I, I got this idea of a very interesting question. Ki, uh, abhi tak, jase, you have worked for multiple companies. So what, according to you, would be the most challenging project that you have done or you felt that you have to take a lot of time and learn a lot of work? What type of project that you did? Uh, so there are two projects actually. One is my Amazon tenure, which I did something new from data science point of view back in 2017-2018. Uh, and a project which is very close to my heart, which I did in Freshworks, mein kiya tha, but it was more from an execution perspective. Okay. And, uh, uske upar, then we published a paper also. So that paper is also there. So I, I can share both the uh, projects. Aha, sure. So uh, the Amazon wale time ka project, tha, uh, that was when, you know, embeddings were getting, like people were getting started with embeddings. Embeddings okay. were not that common. Hmm. In, uh, people were struggling to use RNNs in general at that time at scale. Mm-hmm. So there was this project and I was working with a lot of address data. I was in the last mile team, which manages delivery, mm-hmm. optimizations, etc. So I had a lot of address data and I wanted to build a very simple model, which, you know, what it does was, let's say, if I have an address, 
मैपिंग ऑफ वो एड्रेस को मैं किसी लैट लॉन्ग से भी मैप कर ही सकता हूँ मैप पे सो हैव दैट लैट लॉन्ग कैन आई कॉन्फिडेंटली से दैट विद इन एक्स नंबर ऑफ मीटर्स अराउंड दिस लैट लॉन्ग कैन ओनली अ डिलीवरी हैपन Okay. Otherwise, I'll not allow a delivery guy to mark a delivery as delivered, right? So okay. that is called geo fencing. It is done uh. to protect customers so that you know, uh, delivery boy cannot randomly say, "Okay, I delivered," but actually doesn't. That was a protection uh, model. Okay. It's called geo fencing, and I was building this geo fencing model, and it was giving me decent accuracy. Now the bigger problem is address uh, when it comes to US and UK is very structured. Like I can almost parse every entity and do something with it. Right, mm-hmm. that was a blessing in disguise. India doesn't operate like that at all. In fact, address has been a nightmare for me for the last four years in India. But UK, me, what I did was I uh, converted uh, those embeddings, and then I trained a model to just map these addresses to the already existing lat long that was mapped by some operations team. Right, so I was okay. doing a redundant task. Okay, right? and in doing so, I created a interim embedding space. and i learned these embeddings how can i compress all this information into this embedding space and then mm. use this embedding to predict, uh, predict the lat long okay and uh, okay. then i learned this 128 dimensional embedding and it, the the model accuracy was slightly better and things were looking positive marginally improved and i was like okay it's a win for me it's a win for my theoretical understanding of embeddings now the magic is the magic is and i published within amazon uh, regarding this द मैजिक वॉज उस एम्बेडिंग को वन ट्वेंटी एट डायमेंशन को जब मैंने टीसनी लगा के टू डायमेंशन में लाया एंड आई डिड आई डिड चेरी पिक लाइक आई डिड अफ्यू टीसनी एंड वन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्शन आई जस्ट टुक एंड आई वेस्टेड इट बैक ऑन यू के एंड यू वोट बिलीव द डॉट्स दैट आई गॉट इन दीसनी वर एक्चुअली पॉइंटिंग टू लोकेशन इन ऑन द लंडन मैप ओके That's so great. the so the physical distance between lat long or the idea of physical distance on a map was uh-huh. learned by the embedding and it had the sense of direction also. That's great. So that came out uh, really well and I published and that was kind of a magical moment for me. So mm-hmm. that's when I understood how powerful embeddings can be and now everything is around embeddings, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Chat, GPT, everything is embedding. So. that was my you know <laughs> epiphany uh yeah. 5 years ago uh, on the other side the other project uh, this was with freshworks uh wahan pe we were trying to build a targeting engine right and every company wants to target users in some form or the other mm-hmm. now let's say uh pranjal is there and nitish is there and then mr x from the group is there right and we want to target uh them with uh iphone ads let's say right mm-hmm. and nitesh has a habit of opening his phone at around 7 pm pranjal does that at 10 am and mr x does that in at 3 pm let's say right okay. everybody has a different pattern of usage right mm. so we wanted to build a system which can personalize two things a it can personalize what content to, to target so fashion technology or gadgets uh, real estate and what not Mm-hmm. and at what time should i throw it at a person so that it lands on the top of their notification or on the top of their inbox so that there's a higher chance of conversion got it right so it was a targeting engine and uh, the beauty of this engine was it was a reinforcement learning system uh, jisme ki uh, we were using a lot of contextual bandits and uh, ye system implement karna was almost like a nightmare because reinforcement learning system any reinforcement learning system basically has a feedback loop and it has to be almost real time and your bandits will update uh, their performance or how they are expected to behave basis this feedback so it can all go to trash in a couple of minutes if things go wrong and it will all work like magically well uh, if things are fine so getting this system up and running at a scale where you can target let's say 5 million customers in a day mm-hmm. with more than uh, i don't know 20 categories okay personalized uh, this was that system so scale was the challenge yeah it was a cha- it was an execution challenge because there are a lot of moving components when it comes to a system design outside algorithm the type of database that you choose the type of uh, streaming service that you are choosing how are you maintaining the cache if the if the feedback is not real time do you have a uh, null feedback Uh, if there is a null feedback how will your model take into it if your system crashes let's say bandits are not performing well how do you reset those bandits etc etc so there are a lot of system design challenges when it comes to building a system at scale 
ओके दैट्स इंटरेस्टिंग ठीक है तो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट सेक्शन लेट्स कॉल इट द नेक्स्ट सेक्शन बिकॉज अब थोड़े डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन होंगे सो सी द होल आइडिया ऑफ ब्रिंगिंग यू हेयर वॉज कि एक तरीके से इनडायरेक्ट गाइडेंस भी हो जाएगा फ्रॉम सम वन इज वर्किंग इन द इंडस्ट्री तो एज यू हैव टोल्ड मी लाइक मल्टीपल टाइम्स यू यू टेक इंटरव्यूज राइट यू ऑल्सो टेक इंटरव्यूज तो आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू सी लाइक वॉट आर द थिंग्स दैट यू लाइक an ideal candidate should possess like if someone is applying for a data scientist profile so as an interviewer what do you see ya fir what do you want to see ye thoda samajhna tha hmm uh okay so i I'll, i'll first talk about the the usual process that i follow irrespective hmm. of the company and it is also the process which the industry follows uh, by a lot so uh, when there is always this screening call where you know uh, either the hr or somebody from the team wants to gauge mm. the candidate knows right and usually in that step the best somebody can check is fundamentals mm. right what do i mean by fundamentals uh, data science mein i think there are uh, two types of basic fundamentals one mm. is purely around stats and one is purely around simple models and when i say simple models anything that has to do with regression classification and clustering basic things right okay uh if i am talking about let's say clustering i expect the candidate to know the working algorithm and the bare minimum mm-hmm. understanding of how you know things change if i am talking about classification uh the the candidate needs to know uh, how is bagging different from boosting what is a bias variance trade off why is there a bias variance trade off or rather what is bias if i ask you can you explain bias in very simple terms you, if you know that that is a very clear sign to me that the person is well read and mm. understands what the person is doing similarly in stats uh, a lot of people take stats lightly but i think it's the backbone of a lot of data science and especially when models are built to actually put them in production uh, there is something called ab testing which mm. theoretically is uh, stats and then there is a lot more built on stats so knowing the basics knowing your basic distributions like uh, gaussian poisson exponential distributions etc knowing why is there a difference between mean median and mode and why do we use it how do we use it what is the relevance of standard deviation something as simple as that ye basic cheeze is what anybody tests and is like this is the template that i have generated even if an hr is uh, testing it on in a screening call so i think screening call is purely about uh, are you are you even ready for it hmm. this test right got it and when we say are you ready it basically means if your fundamentals are not clear you're just shooting in the dark hmm. and that will either hurt you some day or it will hurt us the moment you do so right <laughs> so that is what we test that is round number 1 uh, followed by round number 2 is usually a data exercise where we share some real world data so we we try not to share kaggle type competitions because kaggle is too easy right uh, any competition on kaggle has very clean data very well defined uh, problem statements hmm. very well defined metric to optimize right so it's it's right for that point 0.1% of that metric we real world doesn't work like that Hmm. so we share some internal data that is anonymized and we provide a clearly written a problem statement and we give a weeks time or two weeks time how much the candidate wants and we also make sure that we are, we are not just throwing at the candidate we ask candidate are you comfortable starting this exercise let's say this week or the next week so it's also about empathy right uh, hmm. i have to understand that the other person can be in multiple situations and we give all that benefit of doubt so we start with this coding round uh, once the expected answer is submitted uh, mm-hmm. there is an internal panel of uh, engineers and data scientists and uh, architects who review it uh, and then we score it independently and okay. post that there are three rounds uh, these this is what we call an on site process which usually used to happen on site before covid now it's zoom calls uh, so the first round is around uh, ml mathematics this is where we deep dive now this okay. is where we kind of 
uh, take a project. If you tell me that I have built a recommendation system, we will dive into the details of recommendation systems, how you implemented it, why something worked over the other, what was your style. Uh, when I say style, like did you do collaborative filtering? If not, were you using LTR? Things like that, right? So it's a deep dive into mathematics, reasoning, and execution. That okay. is what we call an ML round. Uh, this the second round is a standard data engineering round, which is purely around how you collect and handle data, right? Because okay. that is the bread and butter. So you need to know the basics of SQL. Actually, you need to be pretty decent with SQL, mm. and uh, if possible, PySpark. But we don't expect that. SQL is a must. Okay. So SQL test is there, and the third is like a managerial round where uh, I or other managers who are hiring usually mm. test uh, how good a fit you will be in our culture. No, and that's more like you know background uh, check and uh, sort of a cultural fit test. So this is the usual process, and more or less this is true for every company. A few rounds may be added, a few rounds may be subtracted, but generally this is the structure. Okay. So like Pranjal, you can see like data science may entry karna for someone who is let's say from a different background or non tech background. It is difficult mostly because obviously the math is involved. And the second reason is like, as a teacher, I can tell you the syllabus, the things that you have to study is too much, right? But there is so much to study. So mm -hmm. like, what should be the learning journey of a beginner? Ki, kaise optimize karke, like, kam se kam time mein, you can reach that level ki, jo abhi tumne structure bataya interviews ka, you are able to crack that. Okay. Uh, so I would like to stress on two things. One is uh, the part that you ask ki, how to crack a job. Hmm. And second is the fact that you cannot stop learning. right? So I'll give you why this is important. So I'll, I'll connect back with my journey. right? When I started uh, uh, in 2013, 2014, there was no data science courses. There was nothing, right? Hmm. We, courses, I used to have standard data mining courses around Hadoop that nobody's using anyway today. Hmm. And uh, uh, there used to be stats, pure stats. And I used to write code in R. Like, I don't know if people know this on this platform, but R was a thing uh, uh -huh. last right. decade. So uh, I think when I started, I had zero background. And what I tried to do was a lot of many things together. Uh, and there was no structure. Fortunately, today, there are so many things out there, right? That can provide you a structure. Hmm. You need to stick to one structure or you need to have uh, faith in a process is what I would say. Like people right. who have joined this course with you have faith in you, right? right. And you are providing that structure. So right. sticking to a structure is the key, right? Hmm. If you don't stick to a structure, there is too many things out there. You cannot, cannot follow everything. Hmm. And that is true for me also. Like I feel I am outdated, even though like I read a lot every week, I'm still outdated and that will remain true, Right. So you have to stick to a structure and that structure should be targeted towards a job. Let's say you are starting your career, right? And you want to uh, get into data science. Now, what are the fundamental things that is expected from a fresher? Let's answer that. Hmm. Fundamental things that is expected from a fresher is the basic thing that I just talked about. Screening, hmm. testing, the very basic stats, not even like mathematics of it. If you know a bell curve is also called Gaussian and is also called a normal and there is a mean and a standard deviation and you know the visual understanding of what standard deviation means and uh, what a mean shift means, that is hmm. more efficient. But right. you at least need to know that for a few distributions. Similarly, on uh, ML algorithm side, if you are coming and tell me, telling me, okay, logistic regression is what I will use in classification. It's a very simple one-line uh, equation, right? Mm. If you are comfortable writing that, it gives me confidence that, you know, when the actual data comes, you'll be able to change it if required. Mm. So things like that happen. And then basic SQL. If you can confidently write uh, SQL queries to handle, let's say, a lot of data, Mm. Uh, then you are practically ready to join as a beginner data science person in most companies. I will not say in all, but in most mm. companies, you are ready. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what about projects, Pranjal? Like, uh, projects kitna matter karte hai, is tarah ke interviews mein, uh, aapki learning journey mein, aur kis tarah ke projects banane chahi? Like, I get a lot of questions based on this theme ki, what projects should we do? 
क्या प्रोजेक्ट्स इंडस्ट्री में रिकॉग्नाइज होंगे अच्छे हैं हम सीखेंगे तो आई वुड लाइक टू हियर फ्रॉम यू कि किस तरह के प्रोजेक्ट्स करने चाहिए क्या इंपॉर्टेंस होता है उनका एंड ऑल्सो इस पॉइंट पे आई वुड लाइक टू हियर फ्रॉम यू अबाउट योर स्टार्टअप द प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू डेट बिकॉज आई पर्सनली आई फील की दैट वॉज अ वेरी गुड आइडिया और उसके बारे में इफ यू कैन टेल समथिंग ना तो दैट वुड बी ग्रेट श्योर so i'll answer the first part pehle uh, ki mm-hmm. what kind of projects should people do see ideally uh, a project is nothing but uh, your representation right your portfolio basically mm-hmm. so it helps you a lot in your screening calls when you send out your resume if there is a link there that redirects to your github it gives me a lot of confidence and mm-hmm. if i go to that github and i see okay you have written let's say four basic repositories and in each repository you have done some data science right and there is a thought process to it when i say thought process you know your etl pipelines how you have handled data you know why you have chosen a model and it could be at a very small scale a very very small scale it need not be like a big system right hmm. knowing that the person can think in these steps can write good structured code with comments and has an ability to generate insights because machine learning is not the end game what insights you generate after machine learning is what matters to a business right right even if you write like five pointers uh, in that repository or in that project that okay this is what i have understood and learned about my data or about the problem that i was trying to tackle that is more than sufficient that is actually amazing and the the closer your problem statements uh, to you know real world situations the better it is for example a lot of people so these there's a lot of data is open source right if you go to google data sets there is like mm-hmm. millions of data sets available so let's right. see you start with uh, um, new york stock exchange data nyse right Hmm. you build a very simple uh, poc where you take let's say fang company stocks and you hmm. build a prediction service right now everybody knows you cannot really predict stocks because that's what a lot of billion dollar companies try to do right hmm. wealth management companies but even if you do reasonably good around how you handle data around how that model is approached around how you are approaching time series hmm. in general that will you know just put you above so many other candidates right and if you can reason after it if you can say with confidence okay i am predicting this number with a confidence bound that term itself just segregates you from others right because a lot of people don't understand that there is no value in point estimates you have to talk about confidence bounds whenever you're doing regression so things like that very small small things and one project will not uh, take you more than let's say a couple of weeks even if you mm-hmm. dive deep into it and that will become like a, you a feather on your cap and having two to three feathers is all it takes got it so okay. that is what i believe um, and that is what i actually personally screen on so i always ask people uh, once i receive the resume i write to them and ask if you have any uh, repository on github or mm-hmm. any portfolio wherever it need not be on github can you please share with me or if there is a google drive link where you can upload and share so that's a good thing uh now about alpha hub uh, so i'll i'll basically give some background uh, as to what it did uh so when i was working with amex and amazon and expedia all these companies over 5 6 years i was also constantly teaching data science in these organizations okay. so i was heavily involved in sort of demystifying the black box approaches that people followed because probably like 7 8 years ago even something as simple as a random forest or a xgboost model was like a black box for most people mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and i had to undo it because working in fintech right working in banking companies you have auditory and regulatory checks so you have to make sure that nothing is a black box and people can understand what a system is doing so that, that is critical uh so i was explaining these models and i enjoyed that a lot so i did that in expedia as well i did that in amazon i was explaining a lot of deep learning concepts i used to blog and ye sab karte time i realized that a lot of researchers or students who are enthusiastic about deep learning right in mm-hmm. general really failed to convert their on paper ideas to code ha huh, right you can come and say okay what is a, a res um, resnet block right you can mm-hmm. tell me there is a bypass layer where the residual is flying and there is this three layers um, some convolution some batch norm some normalization and probably one more thing and then that's it you mm-hmm. join that and that's a resnet block and i can do that it at different different scales and what not ab ye samajh aa gaya but ye to paper pe karna is very easy mm-hmm. 
writing that code in pytorch is a nightmare for many people yes so what i thought was if i can create a gui based solution where you can just drag and drop these things mm-hmm. and just connect them randomly and the system there will teach you what is a bad connection and how it needs to be connected and what does it mean if it can teach you in real time while fixing things for you then you are learning what these architectures this this deep learning black box mean and in doing so what it what the system does in background is whatever you are dragging and dropping against it it is writing pytorch code for you hmm. so, so if i am correct this this project was uh, like the main customers were researchers jo yes. code padhte the and unko fir convert karna hota tha and this was a platform designed for them ha to i basically i had some paying customers these were mainly masters and phd students so you see like the number of research papers that you see in ai world these days amazing mm. there's mm. thousands of papers every month so a lot of phd's and master students have this pressure ki i know this idea i can draw it on paper but i can't convert it into code and there is n number of cuda errors coming in there is n number of pytorch error mm. the graph is not compiling things like that so i thought let's help them the, the angle was let's help them and unbox this black box and let's make it very convenient so i used to call it the lego of machine learning or deep ah, learning exactly that that's a good one line description of the project yeah so uh, that was the idea and uh, it started well i did fairly okay for the first couple of months and again it just coincided with uh, covid so i paused it i mean i came back and i'm not working on it right now but some day i'm sure that you know in this era of chat gpt people will want to understand what's going inside and build things inside out mm. i think there is a there is a silver lining where this can revive but yeah that was the idea <laughs> yeah so uh, moving forward pranjal uh, ek question mere ko bahut aa rahe hai uh, set of questions hai but unka meaning internally same hai so question ye hai ki like in our batch also so a lot of people are coming from non technical backgrounds or a few people uh, they are coming from a different background let's say uh, i don't know coding sahi hai software engineering sahi hai but they are trying to transition into data science so different background hai non tech background hai kuch logo ke profile mein there are certain issues jaise ki do teen saal ka year gap ho gaya kuch bhi reason ho sakta hai but year gaps hain to people are concerned ki chalo main pad to lunga aur main acche se prepare bhi kar lunga क्या ये सारी चीजें मुझे रोकती हैं इंडस्ट्री में घुसने के लिए या फिर इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट अगर मैं सही से डेमोन्स्ट्रेट कर पाऊं अपना नॉलेज तो थिंग्स विल टर्न आउट फेयरली वेल व्हाट इज योर ओपिनियन तो आई पर्सनली बिलीव दैट इयर गैप्स आर अ हेल्दी थिंग आई बी ऑनेस्ट सो आई गिव यू माय एग्जांपल बिफोर एमेजोन आई टुक लाइक अ फोर मंथ्स गैप वेयर आई वाज जस्ट ट्रैवलिंग इन माउंटेन्स डूइंग नथिंग Mm-hmm. Uh, before moving to london again i had like a 5 6 months gap where i was just upskilling when i say upskilling i was doing research on natural language processing and trying to understand few new things right uh, so i won't say i've had a year gap but gaps mm-hmm. are fine mm-hmm. to be honest any company that questions you on gaps and is not accepting the nature of that gap Mm. it is kind of a red flag in my opinion <laughs> it kind <laughs> right. of represents their culture right, right. So if, if if let's say you are a working uh, if you are a father or a mother and you know you have to take a gap year for your baby right that's completely exactly. Exciting, right exactly and if you go and tell that you should not shy away i think if you come in an interview with me you should be proud in telling me that i took a gap year for my family or for my baby or for uh, traveling the world or doing anything that you like right exactly so you should take proud uh, you should take pride in uh, what you are doing and should be very comfortable in kind of giving it away during an interview and it should not matter at all it should not at least right. in companies which have good culture it should not matter right right kyunki mere paas typical main bata raha hu kon hote hain gap wala especially jo question puchte hain so people uh, a few people they try for government jobs right तो लेट्स से दे आर ट्राइंग फॉर यूपीएससी यूपीएससी इज अ डिफिकल्ट एग्जाम दो तीन साल लाइफ का चला गया एंड देन दे रियलाइज कि नहीं हो पा रहा है एंड देन नाउ दे आर ट्राइंग टू मेक अ ट्रांजेक्शन तो दे आर वेरी कंसर्न कि यार क्या होगा मतलब विल दे एक्सेप्ट मी ये फीलिंग आ जाती है विल दे एक्सेप्ट मी एंड आई ऑलवेज टेल देम कि यार उनको बिजनेस रन करना है दे नीड द बेस्ट पीपल राइट इफ यू आर वन ऑफ देम वो आपको ज्यादा पैसे दे के दे वुड हायर यू इट्स नॉट लाइक कि यार तू बहुत अच्छा है तू बहुत सही है बट मैं तेरे को हायर नहीं करूंगा बिकॉज तूने तीन साल 
काम नहीं किया दैट एक्चुअली डज नॉट सीम लॉजिकल I'll tell you one thing. So, if you find UPSC candidates who have, uh, you know, done their data science journey and are confident, I will hire them <laughs> because yeah. uh, because yeah. I know yeah. UPSC is like it's challenging beyond anything. Exactly. And the amount of diligence and discipline that you grow while trying to attempt that exam, forget like you know clearing it, just yeah. attempting it is uh, a journey in itself. So if you if anybody on this call or anybody you know has been through that journey and is comfortable in data science, please reach out to me. I think. you should be proud you should not hesitate you should be proud that you went through such a difficult journey and yet you are restarting it it instills more confidence in me in interviewing you than you know feeling that uh, nahi this is something wrong I, i would never think of it like that exactly ye ye misconception tha thanks for clearing this pranjal chalo uh, let's uh, ha what about uh, uh, what about people who have let's say like i have people in my batch who are like 10 plus years of experience who have 10 plus years of experience in a different domain okay uh, let's say sales ki domain mein hai ya fir completely kuch alag domain mein and now they are trying to transition so one question they have is ki should they target senior profiles in data science or should they target fresher wala side what should be your suggestion इट्स अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन आई बी ऑनेस्ट क्योंकि मैं बताता हूँ प्रॉब्लम क्या होती है इफ यू हैव बीन लेट्स अ वेरी सीनियर पर्सन डूइंग और ड्राइविंग नॉट डूइंग ड्राइविंग द सेल्स ऑफ अ कंपनी यू अंडरस्टैंड द मार्केट एंड द ग्राउंड रियालिटी बेटर देन मोस्ट डेटा साइंटिस्ट दैट्स रियालिटी राइट नाउ वेन यू कम एंड डू दिस ट्रांजिशन अ डेटा साइंस जॉब स्टिल रिक्वायर्स यू टू नो ऑल द फंडामेंटल्स and right. uh, a decent grasp of python sql pyspark etc right so what i have observed is a lot of people who have so much experience on ground in operations mm. they they struggle and that struggle is not technical like the, it's not that they cannot learn it's a mm. choice it's an internal choice that they struggle with like do i need to learn do mm. i need to learn coding do i need to learn this starts do i need to learn machine learning formulas and this and not formulas but models and all and i think there is an inherent no if there is a, that inherent no ah, i think right. you are better suited as a analytics manager or somebody who is connected via ops formation so there are, there are these ops role which you know a lot of companies mm-hmm. they have which are kind of supportive because you bring a lot of ground knowledge right let's say i'm building a model that predicts uh, that you know a loading time of a truck will be 45 minutes and you have done this 20 years of your life you come and tell me right. it cannot you have, have the domain knowledge yes so you have to find opportunities where your knowledge or, or where your insights of those 10 12 15 20 years will actually be better than any machine learning system and that's where and that's how you add value to the to the company Right. So that is what I think you should do. Otherwise, if that inherent no is not there, otherwise, if you are, if you you know believe that you can still learn and you want to learn and you learn to code, I have seen so many success stories. Like I I I can tell you, William Falcon, the founder of PyTorch AI, was a Navy Marine uh, until the age of I think twenty something. He had a serious mm-hmm. accident, could not go to Navy. Started learning code, did a bunch of apps on iOS and whatnot. Then had one startup that did okay. Now he has this startup called Pytorch Lightning or Grid AI, and it's already like a I don't know like two hundred million plus dollar startup. Right? That guy started to code at a very late age, and he got into AI a couple of years back, like three four years back. Hmm. Yeah, two hundred million dollar company. So there is no age to learn. That is the right. Model. If you want to learn, you will, and if you don't, then find a better position. Don't hmm. don't fight for something that you are not ready for. because that will only add a lot of you know i don't know disappointment in in some ways right right great answer ranjan so theek hai uh, let's move to the third section this is the last section of uh, today's meeting uh, let's talk about the industry uh, the current state of the industry because abhi currently we are living in a time which is actually fascinating if you ask me because so many things are happening at such a fast pace लाइक like, एक दिन यू फील कॉन्फिडेंट अबाउट योर जॉब द नेक्स्ट डे यू फील इरेलीवेंट मतलब उस तरह का हो रहा है तो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट सो यू हैव स्पेंट अराउंड फाइव सेवन इयर्स इन द इंडस्ट्री तो लाइक हाउ डज 
uh, individual evolve like uh, what all positions you uh, gain uh, when you are working for a company like hota na ye aap point a pe ho usse aap promote ho ke point b pe jate ho to what is the journey of an individual jab aap kisi uh, particular like data science profile mein hote ho okay um so I, i'll tell you the standard uh, designations uh, right 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 so called journey but i'll also tell you how this journey matters that is more okay. important right okay so it has a very simple parallel to software development world so there's an sd one there's a data science one so data science one data science two senior data science lead data science staff and principal and that's it that's 25 years roughly okay right. now uh it doesn't really matter if you are a ds1 or a ds2 because ye bahut abstract definitions hoti hai uh, a ds a uh, 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 lead ds in some company might not be a ds1 in let's say a big tech company right for that matter okay so designations are misleading so don't really go by them just know them that is good enough right that is okay. my first advice second advice is uh, what matters right so for example if you are a fresher if you are a data scientist who has spent about 2 years about or slightly more than 2 years i would say that again the designation doesn't matter somebody will call you a data scientist too somebody will call you senior it's all a matter of taste for the company but what should you know that hmm. is fixed and that is expected across industry and that's where i'm coming at in the second uh, part of the journey which is you need to know your growth path hmm. right and that growth path is both right it, it it's not just that you need to grow in machine learning you have to you know grow in terms of your designation and financially as well and you have to, it's your job to balance that part as well you can't really you know just keep on learning without hikes and all but you have to balance both you can't really run after uh, money jumping companies and you know trying to climb the corporate ladder so to say uh, because you will reach a point where you will be irrelevant for sure Mm-hmm. so don't do that in data science or in any job where you are writing code because when you write code when you do things when you build solutions only then you learn mm-hmm. and when you learn nobody can take that away from you right, right. so if you are thinking okay I'm a, i want to be a ds1 and you do like this you do some course and you get into some company that was very bullish and aggressive in hiring and you end up doing a lot of excel mm-hmm. right? i'm not saying it's bad i mean it's a part of the job but is that what you really wanted if not then how can you leverage that opportunity to grow mm-hmm. can you add value to the business by doing data science proper data science by collecting data and making models and you know explaining insights mm-hmm. if you can't can you transition into a similar role or a similar company where you will do actual data science and you learn something so you should always push for learning in the first 5 years for sure right the company you are in or the designation you are at or the pay you are at most things don't really matter right if your learnings are not sound in the first 5 years you will see the problems coming in after that great point i have interviewed a lot of folks with more than 12 to 15 years of experience they used to call it data mining back then now it's data science and ai and they have handled terabytes of data right but mm-hmm. even then uh, it is unfortunate that a lot of people fail with a lot of very basic concepts got it so it is very important to know these again just summarizing it is very important to know what's going on in the market what designations are used at what level but that's it just keep it in your book it doesn't really matter you need to be there in by right. definition and when you see you need to be there it's very simple how do you test whatever designation you think you are capable of just go and google it and open five different companies job description for that designation mm-hmm. and look right. at the requirements if right. you are fitting 80% in all of that yes you belong there if you are not even you know seeing 20% overlap of what you are and what is requested there then there's a problem there's a big gap mm-hmm. so that is also how you should aim learning got it uh theek hai moving on uh like what about the industry branch like uh, abhi you can see the sentiment is slightly volatile because of the current setup right covid aaya gaya uh, wars chal rahe hain uh, nayi technologies aa rahi hain jisse some times you feel ki yaar ye hame replace kar denge like where is the industry headed 2015 mein i 
थिंक मेन स्ट्रीम हुआ था मशीन लर्निंग ए आई लाइक इंडियन कॉर्पोरेट आई टी स्पेस में सिंस देन इट हैज ग्रोन फॉर श्योर इट हैज ग्रोन वट अबाउट द नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स नेक्स्ट टेन ईयर्स जो लोग अब इंडस्ट्री में घुसने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं वो कैसे उनको पूरा ये देखना चाहिए गोइंग uh, फॉरवर्ड uh, तो इसमें आई थिंक देर आर अफ्यू आई डों एस्टिमेट दैट आई कैन शेयर विथ यू एम नॉट बिल्कुल पहला इज की फॉर श्योर अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच आर डिटर्मिस्टिक यू नो अलॉट ऑफ फोक्स जो आप कंप्यूटर साइंस पढ़ते हो या फिर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर एनल गॉर्डन पढ़ा है आपने तो यू विल नो की देर आर certain processes that are deterministic right mm-hmm. that are almost like a formula as right. long as there is a process that is deterministic it can in theory be replaced right mm-hmm. and there has been evidence so for example amazon has replaced unfortunately a lot of ground forces from their warehouses and replaced them with robots because it is a deterministic job with a very fixed set of operations in a very fixed manner that mm-hmm. can be replicated day in day out right right it was redundant and wherever there is redundancy there is a chance for a system to replace you right mm-hmm. uh now they like until i think 3 years ago people were saying whatever happens ai cannot be creative but again with chat gpt that is also not true right right ai can be creative it can draw it can paint it can learn games it can sing i, I mean it can write music so uh i think what you should not be worried about is the fact that it will replace you that i can guarantee mm. because because reasoning is is the like the uh, i don't know like is the center of artificial intelligence and no matter what we call ai like we use ai so badly that people who actually work on ai have rephrased that term and they now call it agi artificial general intelligence so deep mind call it that but the idea is we are very far from agi right the conscious right. or the root of reasoning cannot be imparted not any time soon mm. the systems are so good at emulating human behavior now mm. that a lot of things that you know have been redundant will change for example a lot of customer service industry will change right call centers will probably vanish because you can have a server running thousand instances of chat gpt system which is fine like which is trained for your domain or your business and that will answer all the questions right uh it can in theory change other redundant jobs as well uh, around driving so autonomous vehicle you already know right mm. uh, truck driving will become autonomous in some years in first world countries so uh as unfortunate it is for you know people who have these hard skills uh i don't think uh, it is unexpected it is expected whereas mm-hmm. whereas for people who are in data science domain right when i say data science domain again let's go back to that data science uh, one journey for a fresher mm-hmm. uh you may not need to know the ins and out of sql anymore because there is a tool that will give you the query you just ask it in plain english right right and that is stealing some of your credibility Mm. right so you need to do a little more on something that it cannot do right and that is what we call niche creation right that is a niche of what you bring to the table right as a, as an employee or as whoever you are in your job domain so i honestly believe there will be a lot more ai tools which will help developers achieve faster and better solutions i mm. do not see them replacing anybody Uh, for example copilot uh, that microsoft launch was expected to replace developers it cannot but right. can it help me oh of course it is a part of my daily routine uh, uh, it just helps me write a lot of redundant code in like tap 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 and it's done right mm. so i think uh, for for areas where programming and data science is concerned you are not going to be replaced anytime soon as long as the work is not systematic and deterministic Right. because you no know, i can give you a very simple scenario it's not happening right now even in late 90s people used to write a lot of formulas across sheet and copy paste things and then do a refresh and you know two things in excel mm-hmm. and then in 2000 there came this feature called macros hmm right. what you do is you hit a recording button and you do those systematic steps while it is recording and then you pause and then you put it to uh, another button and then you hit uh, run it will do the same things because it's it's a simple vba script it's right in the background right so as long as you're doing deterministic redundant stuff 
you you need to be worried but as long as you are doing something foundational where you know statistics where you know machine learning models where you understand your domain where you understand mm-hmm. your data you have spent time understanding fintech e-commerce uh trading whatever it is in your domain right if you understand it you are not replaceable these ai solutions will only become tools to make your life better just like you can ask alexa what's the weather and not really look out of the window just that great insight uh what about the industry like uh data science industry how would it grow like in next 5 years 10 years just the software industry has grown a lot like in like 30 years it has been like i know the prime premier industry like in mu- multiple countries so what about data science industry um i think i'll see, we'll see data science maturing in two ways uh or rather one way actually both are same uh so data science right now is data well mm. and deployment right this is where you create value this is where you do the data science part of data science and this mm. is where you collect gather and handle data right so this was early 2000s big data all that you know the things were happening here then data science was dominating this space for the last decade and still dominating i think the next future for data science is the last bit deployment where there will be a lot of tools which will allow running these models on not just these big uh, aws servers but let's say on your phone or on your smart watch or on your tv on your fridge so a lot of data science will shift to edge devices mm-hmm. and will become very domain specific there will be a very specific kind of models running on uh, let's say medical instruments right mm-hmm. pacers and all there will be very specific types of models running in your washing machine and fridge there'll be very specific types of model running in your smart light let's say for that matter and uh, these things will eventually happen so i think data science will become more domain specific right right now you just if you want to do classification with basic models you have your regression models your classification models with trees and some vectorized solutions like svm and all right so the same class of models had been running on different different data trying to juice out the maximum you can from the data and generate something right right now i think people will adapt these very basic systems right researchers are reaching that point where one class svm will be you know rerun with some sort of a transformer layer in it and people will try to you know put it very specific for one task probably let's say maintaining the heartbeat of somebody with a pacer in their hearts right mm. thing like that so i think data science is become going to be more domain specific and specialized and deployment focused and the second bit right the modeling bit i think a lot of will be abstracted away so auto ml has been a thing in the last 5 7 years uh mm. data dog data robot h2o uh, uh pytorch lightning hugging face all these companies are nothing but abstraction layers on top of the core science bit because they are saying we have the researchers let us handle the science part you enjoy the outcome of the model mm. as long as you have your own data right right so i think that will continue to happen the modeling layer will become more and more abstracted and automated and the deployment layer will grow significantly into different different domains and then you probably can pick in spe- specialization like that so for example people were doing computer vision uh, for i don't know tagging images or finding image segments right mm-hmm. and then came uses in medical science where you know you can find cancer in lungs and what not etc now i think there will come a space where you know people will focus on a very specific type of generative models that mm. are used in designing landscape within gaming systems mm right that is a specialization mm and people will specialize into that people will talk about how this particular model will you know output this 3d matrix that can be rasterized quickly on what not like you know technologically more adapted to that use case and then you will see data science uh, data science will not be generic then you will say see somebody who's like a uh, gaming engineer using ai using ai will be like a subtext everybody will be using ai so right. people will be gaming engineers trading engineers art engineers things like that great sahi hai to uh, yeah guys uh, guys to hamara discussion itna hi tha uh, ab ek kaam karte hain uh, pranjal so क्वेश्चंस पूछे हैं कुछ लोगों ने सो व्हाट वी विल डू इज विल जस्ट गो थ्रू दीज क्वेश्चंस ठीक है यहाँ पर यू कैन जस्ट गिव अ क्विक रिप्लाई जो तुमको लगता है विल बी द राइट आंसर और 
let's go through them right so uh, one question was there like multiple times and the question was uh, ek fresher se kya expected hota hai like uh, what are the deliver, uh, deliverables from a fresher uh, point of view ki jaise puri team kaam kar rahi hai senior position pe log hain fresher ko kis tarah ka kaam milta hai aur kis tarah ka kaam usse expect kiya jata hai kis tarike ka kaam milta hai usually a lot of things uh, which are टाइम टेकिंग एंड रिक्वायर्स और बिल्ड डोमेन एक्सपर्टीज काम फ्रेशर्स को दिया जाता है एंड एक्सपेक्टेड क्या होता है रिगर एवरीबडी नोज दैट मैं किसी फ्रेशर से कुछ ग्राउंड ब्रेकिंग इंसाइट नहीं मांग सकता अबाउट बिजनेस दैट आई एम ऑपरेटिंग इन फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स राइट सो द ओनली थिंग दैट इज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम अ फ्रेशर इज जस्ट पैशन टू लर्न थिंग्स एंड रिगर दैट इज द ऑनेस्ट आउटकम क्या काम दिया जाएगा वो डिपेंड करता है तो फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू टॉक अबाउट रेजर पे ऑफ कोर्स यू विल स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट पेमेंट डेटा राइट राइट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लेंस डू यू ब्रिंग इन व्हेन यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हेन यू स्टडी पेमेंट डेटा व्हाट काइंड ऑफ इनसाइट्स डू यू ब्रिंग इन टीम डिस्कशन लेट्स आई एम सेंग मैं मॉडल बना रहा हूँ टू तो प्रेडिक्ट प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ डिफॉल्ट ऑन क्रेडिट लोन समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड एक अमाउंट कॉलम है उसमें बहुत सारे नल्स है राइट इफ अ फ्रेशर आई फील इट विद मीन mean value of the column hmm that tells a lot right so wo cheez if you are decisive if you say ki no i went and i checked the data and uh, the distribution of the non nulls was like this and my educated guess is that it not, should not be mean but median plus this extra variance for you know adjusting for this and that is level ka basic rigor that's hmm. it a fresher is not expected to build models or fine tune it you know for a deployment system a fresher is not expected to just come and you know change everything nahi ho sakta it is impossible it takes time to learn the basics of a domain and wo curiosity wo passion wo rigor agar dikh raha hai to usi type ka kaam milta hai and jaise jaise aap usme insights add karte jaate ho jaise jaise usme aap uh, wo cheeze prove karte ho jo aapse expected hai you grow in that ladder slowly got it okay. i hope that answers the question ha 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 sahi tha uh next question is pranjal ki jaise kuch log uh, they come from different backgrounds maine bataya tumko so is there a way to you know justify your past job uh, experience like kisi tarike se usko hum data science mein present kar sakte hain like let's say if someone is uh, working in let's say software software se bahut log transition kar rahe hain to data science so how can we uh, leverage that experience and show it in the current interview ya fir abhi ke jobs mein how can you use that experience jo apne past job mein uh, gain kiya hai to isme ek catch hai uh, i would say you should not use your past non data science experience by converting into some shape and form of a data science experience you should not what you should rather focus on is उस एक्सपीरियंस का बेस्ट टेक अवे क्या था आपके लिए फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से आई नो समबडी हु हैज बीन इन द सॉफ्टवेयर इंडस्ट्री और इन द डेटा इंडस्ट्री फॉर ऑलमोस्ट 20 इयर्स आई एम अ मेंटर फॉर दैट पर्सन एंड ही वाज वर्किंग ऑन कोबोल ओके एंड कोबोल फॉर एविएशन इंडस्ट्री ओके now that person coming and telling me that you know i somehow want to manage and tell people that you know all the, that was data science no that's not true that was not data science so right. what i would rather expect for that person to do is tell me honestly what were the challenges that you solved because a cobol is a very difficult system like it's a programming language which is hard to manage b the i don't know the construct of that design is very difficult to manage right you cannot have errors like aviation industry has to be error prone because so many lives depend on it so if you come and tell me okay main atc which is the traffic controller usme i was uh, running this routing algorithm at scale for these two airports and this is my observations for the last 15 years and this is what i see in data if you bring that ability to you know give me aggregated insights if you bring me the rigor of creating systems that are error prone if you bring the rigor of knowing a very like old language and then transferring to something like python or go and you know adapting quickly i don't think you need to convince me convince me for anything else right so basically zaruri nahi hai ki aap machine learning ke through justify karo aap wo pure ke pure uh, pure 
फ्लो में कहीं भी आप बता सकते हो लाइक डेटा गैदरिंग से लेकर के डिप्लॉयमेंट के बीच में कुछ भी अगर आप अपने पास जॉब में किए हो तो आप उसको कनेक्ट करके यू कैन प्रेजेंट इट राइट ओके नेक्स्ट एक बहुत सिंपल क्वेश्चन है uh, और आई गेस आंसर भी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड ही होगा रोल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स वाइल इंटरव्यूइंग एंड वाइल डूइंग योर जॉब जब आप काम कर रहे हो तो कंपनी में I think maximum. Uh, I think uh, communication is the key for everything. So in your interview, if you are not communicating, uh, आपका interview और आपको help नहीं कर पाएगा. That is problem number one. Mm-hmm. So you have to think out loud. You don't have to shy. Uh, people think it thinks people think that it's bad to ask a stupid question. No, it's good to ask a stupid question because then you will not make the stupid mistake, right? So communication is the key in interviews. If you are not thinking out loud, if you are not communicating, it is most most likely not going to do in your favor. That is a thing, and that is coming from a lot of experience. And at your job, I think uh, communication is how you operate, right? Because you work with so many different teams, and there are people at different different levels. So of course, there is a communication style for everything. like the way i talk to a devops engineer is not how will i talk to a vp of payments right but mm-hmm. so i have to modulate what i'm talking about but then still it is me who is talking so i'll be talking data science so if i go to the vp i'll talk about the trends the numbers that matter for business the call outs that i can bring from my models whereas to the devops guy if i go and say i can talk about kubernetes issues or network issues or compute problems or any infrastructure challenges that i'm facing so you always have to be cognizant of what you are talking when you are in mm. a job but you have to have to communicate because until you are talking uh, you will not know what's going on right uh, what about uh, staying updated with the uh, the things that are going on like uh, it's a fast paced industry uh, a lot of papers are being published a lot of software tools are you know getting created day by day uh, how to stay updated मतलब जो डर है कि हम रिप्लेस ना हो जाए हाउ हाउ कैन बी जस्ट स्टे सेफ विथ दैट फीलिंग फ्रॉम दैट फीलिंग आई थिंक द आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल एंड वी ऑलरेडी हर्ड दैट आंसर सो जीरो टू वन का आंसर जो है वही वन टू एन का भी आंसर है जीरो टू वन का आंसर था स्टिक टू अ पैटर्न स्टिक टू वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू बिल्ड एन एक्सपर्टीज इन वन टू एन का भी वही पैटर्न है अगर जनरेटिव ए आई आपके लिए फोटोज और pictures or videos बना के दे रहा है cool use that technology pay for it play with it that's fine but अगर आपका core competency let's say time series में है mm-hmm. try and understand how to utilize that transformer technology that is powering chat GPT in your space अगर आपका core competency uh, language systems में है then it's a separate story <laughs> because it is a language system mm-hmm. uh, but अगर आपका core competency for that matter uh, है tabular data sets में because आज की तारीख में भी 80% परसेंट प्रॉब्लम आर एक्चुअली टैबुलर प्रॉब्लम स्टिल आर अ डेकेड अवे वेयर ए आई कैन बी गिवन एक्सेस टू अ टैबुलर फॉर्मैट एंड इट विल मैनेज एवरीथिंग फार फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट राइट नाउ राइट तो अभी टैबुलर में है तो वॉट इज इट that you can do using these transformers for example i'll tell you a very good use case that i found out last month so uh, there are a lot of uh, data problems jahan pe aapka jo class hai jo aapko predict karna hai bahut rare event hota hai for example fraud right hmm. in one million transactions let's say you have a guaranteed fraud one or two hmm. imbalance problem jo yeah so hmm. imbalance problem so the rare class is extremely imbalanced right hmm. so i proposed why can't we use uh, generative ai to emulate those data sets that that fraudulent data mm-hmm. so people in abhi ke liye kya hota there is things like smart uh, synthetic minority over sampling and uh, things like that uh, people use these things to kind of create fake uh, rare class events but wo itne fake nahi hote the classifier can still through it mm-hmm. right? but the whole premise of generative ai is that usko banane ke liye there is the gan the original the godfather of everything gan mein kya there is a teacher which is a classifier mm-hmm. and there is a generator and the generator is fooling the classifier mm-hmm. the generator can become so good that not only it fools classifiers but humans imagine how powerful a generator can be when you have when you ask it to emulate these rare events right right so it can add a lot of power now i can use that theory it is definitely not a working solution i can use that theory and build on it i can say okay let me pick pick the fraud uh, sorry 
the transaction for last six months. Let me find some anomalies or some fraudulent data points and let me see how closely can it emulate it. And can right. I fool my classifiers, right? I have my fraud classifiers. If I can fool them, then I've created an attacker internally. Mm. And, and then I can use it to generate attack patterns that I will share with my security team saying, okay, there is a new attack pattern that this is this generative AI has developed. How will you block it? How will you block that attack? Right. So I don't see uh, becoming irrelevant or redundant or anything if I am on that track, right? So again, the key is sticking to what you do and doing it the best way possible while utilizing all, all things out there. Okay. Okay. So ye thoda alag question hai. Uh, so someone has asked ki, uh, what about uh, India ke bahar ka data science market like job perspective se. So you have worked outside India. So what would you say like bahar kaisa job market hai? Can we target that as a, as a aspirant and uh, kaisa rahega? Like how can we crack the jobs? What is the channel? Kuch agar ispe you can talk about. Uh, so, uh, I'll talk from a fresher's perspective, right? Mm. Uh, so as a fresher, at least pre COVID talk, it was very difficult to find jobs outside because of standard visa issues, right? right? Now that there is this remote setup where you can work for a company in Europe, UK, US, Singapore, whatever, it, it's, it's a silver lining. And I think it's a big blessing, uh, coming to how is the data science, uh, setup? I personally feel it's pretty much the same. In fact, some of the developed companies are actually behind us when it comes mm. to interesting data science problems. For example, uh, uh, if you think about, let's say, Deliveroo, which is very similar to Dunzo or uh, uh, Blinkit or whatever in India, uh, their problem statements are not as diverse as ours, right? Because for us, address is mm, right. challenging. Mm. And putting that address is in 35 plus languages, it is a disaster, right? Right. And, and all that language issues along with, you know, uh, interactions, like, you know, I've seen addresses like, uh, Mata ke mandir ke piche a jana. <laughs> That's an address that I read in one of my like, Mata ke mandir ke piche a ke call kar dena. Call kar lena. <laughs> and, uh, it's insane, right? Uh, uh, so I think data science wise, uh, any B2C company in India, the number of challenges that you can face there is insane. And mm. the amount of data science or machine learning growth you can have is also insane. So mm. for that, I would suggest stay inside India and work for them. But if mm. you believe, fundamentally think that there are a few things, especially around, let's say, crypto and all, because that market is not too great in India. Mm. So there's something you can do using machine learning and crypto and there's an opportunity outside. Uh, go for it. There's no harm, right? As long as you're getting remote jobs, which is safe and provides you uh, a good salary, which is what you're expecting and provides you a good growth curve, go for it. I would say, uh, there's no harm in it, but overall in eight years, I've seen, uh, we have way better challenges in India than outside world. And for that matter, any developing country will have the same. So let's say if you find a startup like Gojek or Grab or whatever, which is predominantly there in Malaysia, Indonesia, etc., uh, they will also have similar problems like India. So mm -hmm. again, international is good. But you need to understand, uh, is it for growth or for money or for time pass? If it's for mm -hmm. time, don't do it. Uh, if it's for growth, definitely do it. And if money comes with growth, nothing better can happen. Got it. So last question, Pranjal. Uh, there are questions. I have to ask possible. Uh, main kisi aur session mein I'll answer. Uh, one last question is, and this is a question that is very asked, especially uh, from freshers, who are in college or just nikle hai. So role of data structures and algorithms in data science like uh do you use it on a daily basis when you are working in these companies uh because interviews clear karne ke liye bahut sari companies especially freshers level pe they ask questions related to dsa so what's your take on this uh that is a very good question thank you for that and i will bring two things from my journey two big mistakes i would say from my journey First is uh, taking uh, data structures and algorithms lightly in the initial days of my career. And second, uh, limiting myself to, uh, you know, not grow in my understanding of stats. So as I said, right, I, when I was starting, I, I knew what a T-test, Z-test, F-test was, like how to calculate these scores, what are different distributions, et cetera, et cetera. But I did not really understood the depth of it. 
So even today, if I go to a tenure data scientist in some companies, the moment I change the null hypothesis, everything will just vanish for that person because memorizing what happens when the p value is greater than 0.5 is not 0 0.05 is not stats, right? Mm. So absorbing the depth of stats and absorbing the true meaning of data science, uh, sorry, uh, data structures and algorithms is something that I personally feel I made mistakes with in the early years of my career. Mm. And I think these things are uh, critical. I, I won't say important. These things are critical and I'll tell you why. So uh, I have friends in almost every big tech company uh, as of today. And I can almost guarantee you, they've told me this in person that a lot of hard lead code problems that you see, or even some medium lead code problems, right? Around graphs and trees and whatnot. They themselves don't encounter such challenges more than once or twice a year, right? Mm -hmm. It is almost useless for them, for mm -hmm. software engineers, right? With the, the, the hiring process is those problems and it's almost useless for them. Whereas, yeah. whereas I can tell you that, uh, Neural networks are basically graphs. <laughs> and for that matter, if you are processing data, let's say I tell you that, you know, we want to create an address map where uh, first four digits of the pin code will decide a node. And then the edges will be based on the last two digits and we want to create a graph out of it. And then we'll do some machine learning on top of that. If you are not comfortable with the data structure called graph, if mm. you are not comfortable about DFS, BFS traversal, it is impossible for you to handle that data. Forget data mm. science. Mm. Data science will come once you handle the data, right? Okay. So I see a lot of data scientists uh, in their initial days struggling with very, very simple things. I see a lot of data scientists writing three, four loops. And in the most inner loop, there'll be like a operation on a data frame. So it is already in queue and then you're mm. doing something else, right? Right. And you come back and tell me, uh, I was trying to do this very simple thing on this one column and it is taking me five hours. What should I do? Right. I mean, you understand the power of how to optimize and how to write good vectorized code, how to, you know, understand time and space complexity, that five hours will become probably 30 seconds or two minutes. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, it has a lot of impact and value to know data structures and algorithms. Algorithms, not so much because of course, nobody is going to ask you reversal English in data science. Let's be honest, right? But uh, data structures wise, yes. Uh, I think a lot of people who do data science uh, fo focus on NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. That's an important uh, skill set to have in your repertoire. But at the same time, you need to know basic Python uh, built-ins, data structures, right? So everybody knows there's a set, there's a dictionary, there is a list, and there's tuples, right? Mm -hmm. uh, up to know about what immutable and mutable are. And only a very few know that there is... A, built-in heap allowed in python there is only a few who know there is a doubly ended queue allowed in python right and what is the time complexity of adding something to a list removing something from the top first position indexing into a list slicing into a pandas array like these basic basic operations that you write in one line and forget on a dummy data set makes no difference because those operations runs in millisecond but the moment right. that dummy data set becomes like a data set of 10 billion rows your code will fall apart and so will your project. So right. I think, again, summarizing data structures, go for it. Like there is no way out of it. You should know most common data structures and more basic traversal algorithms. Nobody is going to ask you to write quick sort or merge sort for that matter. It is implicitly available in all languages. But just knowing how that works is really helpful because you know someday you will see, okay, there are these two streams of data and I have to merge them and they have to be sorted in a timestamp manner. Oh, can I use some sort of a modified merge sort? And that becomes a data science problem because suddenly you are, you have the capacity to process that data right. on top of which you will build a system, right? Right. So yeah, data science and algorithms, there is no way around and uh, stats, do your best, do all the minimum required and then continuously build on it. Like don't stop learning. In data science, I can give you one thing for sure in the last eight years, there hasn't been a month where I did not find something new to learn. <laughs> a month, I'm not saying a year, a month. Right. right. And that is critical. And I, for a fact, read a lot more than a lot of freshers who join my team. And I keep sharing, there's a Slack channel we have. I keep sharing articles, blogs, GitHub code, and things like that around very basic, basic things, right? 
but if you stop learning and if you think okay i've reached this point and i can chill and grow that that probably will make you relevant with chat gpt someday right okay one last question from my side pranjal uh, you reminded me like you said ki one of the mistakes of your career was not focusing much on dsa uh, any other mistakes that you did uh, initially and you think others should avoid mm, i mean those were the top two uh, mm, it's okay nahi kiya hoga to sahi hai matlab <laughs> it's fine maine kiya to ho gayi i i was thinking more about so जब मैं कर रहा था तो आई कैन टेल यू फ्रेम ऑफ माइंड रादर देन अ मिस्टेक व्हेन आई वाज स्विचिंग अराउंड कंपनीज अग्रेसिवली विद इन लाइक टू टू इयर्स स्पैन आई ऑलवेज हैड दिस क्वेश्चन इन माइंड बिकॉज अ लॉट ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स वाज स्टिकिंग ऑन राइट जॉइनिंग और माइक्रोसॉफ्ट वट एवर स्टे राइट प्रॉब्लम मूव टू यू एस दैट गेम फॉर मोस्ट फैन कंपनीज एंड आई डिड नॉट आई वॉज मूविंग अराउंड अलॉट सो दे आस्ट मी लाइक इट डजेंट रिफ्लेक्ट गुड ऑन योर रेज्यूम एंड दिस इन दैट so at that time i felt that was a mistake honestly jumping companies jumping countries i thought i thought all that was a mistake uh but now when i connect the dot backwards i i completely disagree i think those were the most amazing decisions of my life and uh, they're amazing because of because of those decisions i'm where i am and i have i've kind of reached a good point in my journey right like so i i don't feel that you know i don't regret anything that's the bottom line i don't think like one of my friend is in us and somebody is doing this and somebody is doing maybe like people are doing great stuff i i have a lot of friends who are founders of unicorn companies that's fine but yeah. i am comfortable and happy with where i am and i thought that was a mistake and the only thing i wanted was a mentor who can probably you know come and tell me that's not the case that was missing so that's not a mistake i wish i had reached out that could be a mistake i did not reach out to a lot of folks so always reach out always reach out to mentors folks who are ready to help there are so many platforms these days right there's linkedin twitter uh, discord channels and many other forums right seeking help is a mistake that i did uh but then fortunately it turned out well for me so i would recommend folks to not make that mistake reach out uh, write to people you have faith in uh and kind of don't let yourself clouded by all the noise or all the you know agility of this uh, domain mm-hmm. because it will get to you some day it, it gets to me almost every month so it will get to you uh, don't feel mm-hmm. afraid talk uh talk with friends talk with researchers talk with mentors and that's going to help you okay so yeah that's it uh, pranjal guys tell me kaisa laga did you like the session i can tell you like uh, i can give you na- one number pranjal uh, so uh, this session uh, like around 180 people or 175 people joined right now there are like 170 plus uh, i can tell you about my sessions i took a session yesterday Uh, which had a similar number and by the end of the session there were like 80 people so this is already a very good metric that people have liked uh, so thank you for coming yaar matlab not only for those students i can tell you uh, on my behalf like i gained so much in the last 1.5 hours thanks for that very insightful or uh, very thought provoking like i would definitely uh, think about the session today tomorrow i guess so a uh, great session thank you for coming and uh, yeah that's it uh, you want to say something uh, to the students uh, from your side so sure. uh, so first of all i mean uh, thank you so much anitesh and for inviting me and uh, i i would like to tell one thing not just to you to everybody in the forum uh, i am a very very strong believer of you know asking for help and giving back now that i have realized that it's a big mistake people do and that's what we just talked about so i always try and help and uh, that's why i have like a, a few flat platforms where i mentor that's why i do classes in my company and that's that's why you know i am here to mm. share my journey so that people can feel inspired and probably seek help uh if you want to seek help uh, you can connect with me on linkedin and you know uh, i usually try to respond on linkedin messages in about a few days of time so if you uh, if you connect with me 
I will try to help you. And uh, I'd like to tell all the folks in this uh, forum right now that, you know, you have a great mentor, teacher, friend here in, in this guy, Nitish. Uh, Thank you. He's a great, uh, great friend of mine. And uh, I think uh, your journey is going to be golden. So stay put, uh, buckle up, uh, be ready to learn, be passionate and don't feel afraid. Like things will come and go. It's fine. Mm -hmm. As long as you are a firm believer of something, you will make it happen. And that's what is my personal, you know, motive, uh, mantra. So all the best to all of you. Thank you so much again for all the love you gave and for all the, you know, uh, good comments you are sharing. I'm not able to do <laughs> But uh, really enjoyed the session. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be happy to you know touch back whenever later if you guys feel that's needed. Uh, yeah, that's all from my side. Yeah. Okay, Pranjal. So I'll close the session. Thanks for coming. Bye. Good night. Bye bye everyone. Good night.